Hey, this is Ms. Harris. Um, today I am book talking books from eRead Illinois. Um, these are audio books that you would listen to. There's no text, just the audio. So here we go. This book is called Girl Code, Gaming, Going Viral and Getting It Done. And it's a great little book. It is the story of two girls who uh, went to technology camp. They went to one of those girls who code summer camps and they teamed up to create a video game that went viral and it ended up becoming world famous. Um, the girls are called um, Andy and Sophie and through the success of their video game, Andy and Sophie got um, some amazing access to some of the biggest startups and tech companies. And now in this book, they're sharing all the cool things they've seen and all the cool experiences they've had because they've had this success with their video game. And um, so you learn all about their journey and kind of get an inside look at the tech industry and the true power of coding and some amazing women who are shaping the world. The next book is called Warriors Don't Cry. And it is about the landmark 1954 Supreme Court ruling that you've probably heard of, Brown versus the Board of Education. And that's the one that brought the promise of integration to Little Rock, Arkansas. But it was really hard won for the nine black teenagers that were chosen to integrate Central High School that year. Um, those students really ran the gauntlet flanked by a rampaging mob and heavily armed Arkansas National Guard um, and the opposition to their going to school with white teenagers was so intense that soldiers from the elite 101st Airborne Division were called in to restore order in their town. So um, the woman that wrote the book, Melba Beals, um, was one of those nine students. And along with her eight friends, um, she talks about how they transformed into these reluctant warriors and their battlefield was really what helped shape the civil rights movement. And the, the book is drawn from her personal diaries that she kept at the time. And it's just the true account of her junior year at Central High School. And it shows really how hard it was to use dignity and courage to pull through those difficult times. Our next title is called Blizzard of Glass. It is another historical nonfiction in December of 1917, the day started out like any other day in Halifax, but everything stopped shortly before nine o'clock that morning when two ships collided in Halifax Harbor. One of the ships was loaded with ammunition for the troops fighting World War I in Europe, and the other one was preparing to collect medical supplies for the war's victims. The resulting disaster was the largest man-made explosion ever until the detonation of the atom, atomic bomb in 1945. But the Halifax blast flattened large areas of their city and the town across the harbor even, Dartmouth, and it killed nearly 2,000 people. And if, if all of that wasn't devastating enough, a blizzard hit the next day, dumping more than a foot of snow on the whole area and slowing down the much needed relief efforts. So this is really a harrowing story of tragedy but also of recovery, which reveals the extraordinary strength and determination of a community when it pulls together in one of its darkest hours. The next book I also talked about in the print book talks, but um, there's also an audio, so I wanted to include it in this collection as well. The book is called Uprooted. It is about um, a historical thing that happened in America during World War II. About 75 years ago, the American government did something that most of us would think is absolutely unthinkable today. Um, our government rounded up over 100,000 of its own citizens based on nothing more than their ancestry and kept them in concentration camps for the better part of four years. How could this have happened? Uprooted takes a close look at the history of racism in America and it carefully follows the treacherous path that led one of our nation's most beloved presidents to make this unprecedented decision. In the Shadow of Liberty is um, another historical. Did you know that many of America's founding fathers who fought for liberty and justice for all were actually slave owners? Through the powerful stories of five enslaved people who were owned by four of our greatest presidents, 
This audiobook will help set the record straight about the role that slavery played in the founding of America. Charles and Emma, The Darwin's Leap of Faith. Charles Darwin, he's the guy that published The Origin of the Species. That was the, the first book about evolution and the idea that man has evolved from apes. And all of those um, fundamental ideas, that book came around in 1859. And so here we are about 150 years later, and the theory of evolution really continues to cause tension between the scientific and the religious communities. And this debate actually started with Darwin himself, and it played a really important part in his marriage. His wife, Emma, was really quite religious, and her faith gave Charles a lot to think about while he was working on a theory that really continues to spark intense debates. So if that idea is appealing to you, this is a really good story. Terrible Typhoid Mary, the true story of the deadliest cook in America. What happens when a person's reputation has been forever damaged? This is a riveting biography of a woman named Mary Mallon. And it looks beyond the tabloid scandal of her controversial life. But why was she so scandalous? because she had a disease called typhoid fever and she was contagious. Medical professionals and the government actually even quarantined her. But when she was released, she went right back to her job as a cook because she never showed any symptoms. So people didn't know she had it, but she was spreading it and there was no cure for it. She then, when she went back to her job as a cook, she infected even more people. So this story of how she was treated by medical and legal officials kind of reveals the lesser known story of human and constitutional rights when you tangle those up with the science of pathology and epidemiology. I think this book is really interesting considering the fight we have had with COVID-19. This book is called The President Has Been Shot, The Assassination of John F. Kennedy. If you don't know anything about John F. Kennedy's assassination, this is the book to read. It's an absolutely breathtaking, dramatic account of the JFK assassination. And it's told in a very you are there style, which makes it a very edge of your seat, dramatic read. Um, when I started reading it, I actually stood at the library bookshelf and I couldn't put it down. I just stood there and read. Um, in this book, you'll, you'll absolutely live through one of the most shocking, sad, terrifying events in American history. Um, it's a spine chilling um, tale full of detail that I've never heard before. And it will show you this little piece of history in a way that you have never experienced it before. It's, it's really moving and it's, it's very, very good. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, Sandra was just 10 years old when she found herself with a gun pointed at her head. She had watched as rebels had gunned down her mother and her six-year-old sister in a refugee camp right in front of her. Remarkably, at this moment, the rebel did not pull the trigger and Sandra was able to escape. So that's when her new life began and she and her surviving family members had no home and no money and they struggled to stay alive. But eventually, through a United Nations refugee program, they were able to move to America only to face yet another ethnic disconnect. Sandra may have crossed an ocean, but there was now a much wider divide that she had to overcome. And it started in a middle school in the state of New York. So the subtitle of this book is Memoirs of a War Child. And I think it's important to step into other people's shoes sometimes and, and take a look at how someone can overcome such horrific experiences. This book is called How Dare the Sun Rise. Those are the book talks I have for you today. I just wanted to point out that there were a few that I talked about in the print book talks that are also available in audio. And that includes the book, I Will Always Write Back, How One Letter Changed Two Lives. It also includes Discovering Wes Moore and the Family Romanov. All three of those were also available in audio. So happy reading, happy listening.